A blessed morning to everyone. Thank you for being here on our Tuesday morning's devotion. We also have uh, our Thursday morning's devotion. May God continue to help us as we okay, let me stop this. as we continue to seek his face and study his word as we continue to look forward to his soon and imminent return. So thank you for joining us again. Um, Sister Devon, and I'm seeing another person online under the account of K83CA, welcome. And for those who are joining us live on our Facebook Rescue Depression TT page, we welcome you there as well. So right before we start, let us pray, and then um, we will get straight into our morning's devotion, which is a very, very interesting one. Remember, we are still looking at the book last day events, and we are on chapter 11, which deals with Satan's last day deceptions, Satan's last day deceptions. So let's pray. Oh, merciful Father. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of being alive. I thank you for all who, who are here so far and who will be joining us very soon. I pray, Lord Jesus, that your Holy Spirit will continue to lead us and direct us. Help us to continue to seek your face in prayer, in the studying of your word. Help, Lord Jesus, that our lives will reflect what we are studying within your word, Father. Help us to reform. I pray, Lord God, that even as this devotion goes forward, I pray that men and women hearts will be drawn unto you, Lord Jesus. For we know that you are coming back very soon and you are coming back for people. I pray, Lord Jesus, 
that we will make our lives ready to receive you and to accept you when you should come. Continue to be off with every family represented here. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you may continue to be with them. And if they have not accepted you as their personal Lord and Savior, that they may, you may impress upon their hearts that they will make that change. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. So before I resume, I'm seeing a hand up. I'm not sure if you have something to say or something to ask. But if so, you can go ahead under the account KSK83CA. Do you have anything to say? Your hand is up. Or it's maybe an error. All right. Okay, so at this time, I will share my screen. Good, hope everyone can see that. So as I've said before, our, our, our topic is Satan's last day deceptions. Now, it is not a dispute anymore that we are living in the last days. I don't think anyone, any right thinking person could dispute that because we are seeing the signs. Now, the only how we can dispute that is someone who is really not looking for the signs or studying God's word. And in God's word, we will see the signs. So without a shadow of a doubt for those who are looking and watching, we are living in the last days. We are living in the last days. And we have an enemy. And that an enemy is not our spouse. That enemy is not our children, is not our neighbor, but that enemy will always be and remain to be Satan. And because we have an enemy who hates us, because he knows that once we stay faithful to him, we will be enjoying all the bliss that he has lost. And because of that, he hates us and he will try everything in his power to make sure that you and I do not receive what God has gone to prepare for us and for us to share the same faith that he will share oh, very soon. So we have a four and that four is Satan and he has some deceptions to try to keep us in bondage of sin and to make sure, as I've said before, that you and I, we are lost. But God did not just left us like that. Through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he has shown us Satan's deception. And that is a wonderful God. He has shown us what to look for. And we, as children of the light, always must be on guard. Because Satan will use all devices to ensure that he make us fall and sin against our Redeemer and our Creator. So our scripture reading this morning, I would like to ask the stability to read it for us. It's taken from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, and it's on the screen. It is taken from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, and this is the King James Version of Bible. So, Sister Billy, you can read it. Um, could you tell me the uh, Melissa? Um, Sister Melissa, can you tell me the scripture reading once again, please? It's Ephesians 6 1. It's on the screen if, if you are in a position not to go for your Bible. But it's on the oh, screen. screen. Could you? you you see in that? Oh. Um, but it's from Ephesians right. 6, 11. 
All right, Ephesians 6, 11. Yes. Put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the the, the wow. vows of the devil. That's wow, right. sorry. <laughs> Thank you, my dear sister. So God is telling us that we need to put on the whole armor of God, not part of the armor, not just the helmet and not just our shoes, but the whole armor of God that you and I will be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. And if we read this text another way, if we do not put on the armor of God, we will not be able to stand against Satan's wiles, Satan's plots, Satan's bats. So we are moving forward. Father, you continue to help us to dissect your word and give us the right interpretation for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, under the 11th chapter of the book of the events, we see there a subheading, which is under the garb of Christianity. Under the garb of Christianity. And it says, we are approaching the end of this earth's history. The end. And Satan is working as never before. As never before. He is striving to act as director of the Christian world. So what is Satan doing? He is trying to act as director of the Christian world with an intensity that is marvelous. He is working with his lying wonders. Satan is represented as walking about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He desired to embrace the whole world in this confederacy hiding his deformity under the garb of Christianity. He assumes the attribute of a Christian and claims to be Christ himself. Remember this forum is an open one and we allow people to share, to, to have their comments because we are all here to live. So here we are seeing that in the last days, in this time that we are living in, Satan will be covered or try to deceive the world under a covering, a counterfeit of Christianity. And it is rightly seen here on the screen as a wolf, a sheep. No, a wolf covered in sheep clothing, a wolf in sheep clothing. We must be very, very careful brethren, to make sure that we are not being deceived by Satan. Now in Matthew 24, we always, we always have to go back to that chapter because Jesus himself was actually telling his disciples what to look for in the last days. And that same thing that he told them it is actually type and anti-type what we can be looking for in this time. He said, take heed, lest no man deceive you. And here we are seeing Satan now will use Christianity as a cover up to execute his plot. And if we are not sure, brethren, if we are not careful enough to keep a watching eye and to always ensure that we have the Holy Spirit leading us, we will be deceived, just as the whole world. We will be deceived. Anyone have anything to share before I move on? It says the word of God I must say before I move on, good morning to those who have commented on our Facebook page. Good morning, nice happening. The word of God declares, the word of God declares that when 
It suits the enemy's purpose. He will, through his agencies, manifest so great a power under a pretense of Christianity that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Now think about that, friends. Who are God's elect? And think about what God has called us as a people in this world to do. And true inspiration to say, if it were possible, meaning the deceptions would be so close to the originals. If it were possible, we who claim to be God's very elect will also be deceived. Brethren, how could we don't be deceived? How could we not be deceived? Our only safety is Christ Jesus. That is our only safety. In our own selves, we already fail. We can do it. We can't do nothing. But because of Christ, we are now able to stand in him. That though Satan has so many cover-ups, and trust me, as I always been told, he have he have something for all of us. He knows our weaknesses. He know where we are still struggling, and he have something for us. He knows he have his aims watching us twenty four hours since we were born, and looking at our our character or traits or attributes, looking at it. And when he's watching us, he knows, okay, this will get Chris and Bex. I can use that. This could get sister who or brother who to curse, to sin, and he uses that. Our only safety brethren is in Christ Jesus. The reading goes on to say, the strongest bulwark, meaning like a, a strong wall of vice in our world is not the inquisitious life of the abandoned sinners. Now, listen to this very carefully. Or the degrading outcasts. It is that life which otherwise appears virtual, virtuous, having the form. Honorable, everyone looking up to you, and noble, but in which one sin is fostered, one vice indulged, whether it be in genius, talents, sympathy, even generous and kindly deeds, wrong motives, may thus become the cause of Satan to entice souls over the precipice of ruin. The scripture rightly said where, where it is from, having a form of godliness. Second Timothy 3, 5, having a form of godliness but denying the, the power thereof. From such turn away, brethren. Although we we are God's people, and we may have appear to have the virtues of a Christian, and so honourable and so noble in the eyes of men, Satan just want us to foster one sin, one vice, and this is his. This is his deceptions in the last days. Oh, pride, jealousy, appetite, just one he need. And when he get that one, <clears throat> he will use that to make sure that we are overthrown on a 
precipice to our ruin. Satan doesn't like us. He's not our friend. So he will just look for a little opening. Just a little opening. Just think something and your actions portray what you think. And he will use that. And that is why constantly we are to be asking Lord, we are to be asking the Lord to take away every sin from our lives. Be honest with God. Because God knows our weaknesses and sins, and he knows also. So if we just be honest with God, Lord, take away this thing from me. It is hindering me from becoming who you want me to become. And we, while doing that, God will give us the strength to overcome and Satan will not be able to use it because we would have been overcome out of that particular sin. Brethren, I often say that our attitude must be the attitude of the people in the antitypical day of atonement. There are many things that we hold on to so dearly. And this is encouragement and not a condemnation and because God's word should never be used for condemnation, but education. And this is for myself. There are many things that we hold on so dearly that will cause us our soul salvation. But if we adopt the attitude of the of atonement, then we will be confessing and pleading and asking the Lord to take away these things, these stain in our characters. And God, because he loves us, he will give us the strength to overcome. We just need to be honest with God. Any any um, comments before I move on? No? Yeah. Okay. Any, uh... Anyone have anything before my husband says something? Um, there's something very important where we read here. She said that Sister White is saying that one degrading, but an important part, but, but in which one sin is fostered, one sin. And it does draw back to me from the interaction with, with um, the woman at the well. When Christ was talking to her, and she and you're telling her and you're telling her the um, but the hour commit and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him in spirit. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. So here it is. God is encouraging. God is interested that we worship Him in spirit and in truth. Why this is so important, even why my wife was um, quoting a text based upon um, 2 Timothy 3 5, saying that we have any form of godliness, but denying the power there from such a certain away. So we deny a, 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 a very important power God is saying that we are denying. That is why he encouraging us to worship in his spirit and truth. The power that we are denying in our life is the gift of the Holy Spirit. Why he is so important? Because based upon St. John, he said that when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will convict the world of sin. So this one sin that I might be hiding, that my wife might know that I am fostering in my, in my mind, but the spirit, the Holy Spirit, know that I have that in my mind. And if we deny him, he is convicting us. He is convicting us. It's convicting each one of us and telling us you need to overcome that. Mm -hmm. We need to overcome that. And that is why Christ is telling us that we need to worship him in spirit and truth. Because once we deny the power thereof, we were not able to become what? Sons and daughters of God. And another important, based upon Ephesians chapter 4, it's so important. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, it says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby we are seen on the day of redemption. So when we deny the power thereof, we are denying the Holy Spirit of sealing us for the day of redemption. So it's so important. The Holy Spirit will keep on convicting the world of what sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. So when we continue to deny the power of brethren, we are denying the most, the most 
we, we, we deny Jesus and God in one, and the Holy Spirit. The three are in one. So that is very important. So here it is, once Satan could get us to this, have the form of godliness, he have us. He have us. I was also considering when even when my husband say one, where am I? One sin fostered. What comes to my mind, you know, often as I was talking to a sibling of mine and, and that person was saying, I don't think God will put me in hell for just one sin. One lie. And I was like, now we have to understand sin and the nature of sin. And that is something that God really don't like. Sin cannot stand in the presence of God. And I started to Oh, wait, what Satan did, and he was cast out of heaven. Let's look at our four parents, Adam and Eve. Was it not one disobedient that, that caused them to be kicked out of the Garden of Eden? Okay, coming down, look at Moses. And God told him, speak to the rock. And he was so fed up at the Israelites and their ungratefulness, which he it. And he couldn't even enter Canaan. Brethren, one sin, once fostered enough, meaning you holding on to that and refusing to let go of it, God ain't gonna put you in no hell. We will cause ourselves to go there. And that is why it's so important for us to make sure we search our souls, search, search ourselves, and we will know it. As, as my husband saying, you see what goes on here? He may not be aware of it, but God is. And I am aware of, all, of it also. So once anything that we know in our character that is sinful, we just have to be praying and pleading and asking the Lord to take it away. Take it away. Mm -hmm. Let us not hold on to anything that does not work our salvation. And when it comes to sin, no sin is worth our salvation. The floor is open, anyone? You guys are quiet this morning, but that's all right. Listening is good. <laughs> Let's move on. It says, even in the Adventist church, it says we have far more to fear from within than from without. And I did not put in this sub, sub, subheading. And this is in the book last events. It says the hindrances, the strength, and success are far greater from the church itself than from the world. Unbelievers have a right to expect that those who profess to be keeping the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus will do more than any other class to promote the honor by their consistent lives, by their godly example and their active influence, the cause which they represent. But, but however, but how often have the professed advocates of the truth prove the greatest obstacles to its advancement. We, we, we who are called out of darkness into God's marvelous light, who's supposed to be the examplers of truth and the light of this world now that God said we are the light of the world, we ourselves are being hindrances to the cause or the advancement of the work of God. The unbelief indulged, the doubts expressed, the darkness cherished, encourage the presence of evil angels and open a way for accomplishment of Satan devices. Remember, we are looking at Satan's last day deceptions. So Satan said, okay, I have to now orchestrate a plan to make my character prominent in God's church. 
It's okay. And I, I, I took I took these three pictures from up, up, um, Google and it has many others. I said, we who are supposed to be examples of the truth, sometimes we find ourselves now dressing like the world, playing the same music like the world, eating like the world, behaving like the world, doing everything like the world. So now the people who are in the world see no difference and just look at us as just big hypocrites and saying it makes no sense doing any transition because they also who are in the church behave just like us. And if they are going to heaven, all of us are going to heaven. LGBT, everybody, everybody just going to heaven and pull up heaven and only Satan and his kids will be burning. No, this is a deception. Deception is a Satan has infiltrated God's church and bringing his attributes and character. And if we as God's people are not mindful enough to watch, we will start to behave just like Satan and think that we are doing God's service. So Satan, he said, not only in, not, not even in Adventist church, we have to fear, we have far more to fear from within than without. We think in the last days that is all most of these rulings will be our greatest foes or greatest bitterest enemies. Of course not. When we was considering Jesus, who crucified him? His own people. His own people. When Moses led the children out of Egypt, who was bad talking him the most? His own people, together with a mixed multitude. Brethren, we have to make sure that all those Satan's exceptions may be very, very prominent at this time. We have to make sure that we are not being deceived. So in every aspect of our lives, we just have to pray and ask God, Lord, help us. Help us not to be a hindrance to anyone, to my unbelieving family, to my neighbors, to my children. Help me not to be a hindrance for them and make them say it's because of you, Christian. I want nothing to do with Christianity. It goes on to say, the saints must get a thorough understanding of present truth. How do we get a thorough understanding of present truth? By studying God's word and the spirit of prophecy, which they will be obliged to maintain from the scriptures. They must understand the state of the dead. Listen, listen what God to the inspiration is telling us. We must understand the state of the dead for the spirits of devils will yet appear to them professing to be beloved friends and relatives who will declare to them that the Sabbath has been changed. Also other scriptural doctrines has been changed. If we don't understand the message of um, the state of the dead, we may be deceived. How often times we hear people saying, I had a dream that my great grandmother was talking to me and she was telling me and warning about something, you know. And take that to be the voice of God. And I have these indulgence and shows. I was watching this, the, the lady who is there, she, her name is Teresa. And there's a, sh um, a show that she have on TLC, I think. Um, but all these three is mediums, mediums. And they claim to have the gift <clears throat> of speaking to the dead. So they will go around to all these famous and rich people, <clears throat> excuse me, and tell them 
concerning if they have a dead loved one, granny says so and so, and the mother says so and so. And what makes it more deceptive is that they will be telling them things that they alone know. When you were small and five years old, remember this happened? We have to remember Satan was around when they were five years old also. And not like we, we forget very fast, right, Miss Billy? Satan don't forget. Satan don't forget he remembers when we were small, some of the things that happened. So now Satan can use these three individuals and others to come back to stir up the emotions of men and tell them things that happen that they alone may know and they say, okay, this has to be true. This has to be true. And not only will Satan come to us and tells us that the Sabbath has been changed and other scriptural doctrines has been changed. Not only the Sabbath, but other scriptural doctrines. That's why we need to understand the message of the state of the dead, because in the last days, that is one of his deceptions. That is one of his deceptions. And you won't believe how many followers these people just have. Lots and lots of, they're very influential. So that, that more so, that's why we have to be careful. Under the same thing, anyone have anything to add? So Sister Celine, on our Facebook page, I just want to view, um, read her, her comment. She said, one of our biggest problems as believers is that we cherish known sins. And this is how Satan will destroy many. And that's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. We know about something in our lives and we refuse to give it up. It's so true. We have to remember that sin will not rise again a second time. It's so true. So if we ain't get rid of it now, they will have no other way, no other time to get rid of it. That is why we have to get rid of it now. now what will make us what, what could be, what will give us the drive to get rid of sin? Is praying and asking God for, for, for us to fall in love with him. Because when we get to recognize that based at his current, then talk about every time we sin, we crucify Christ afresh. So when we start to fall in love with Christ, here it is that that will cause us to hate sin. Mm. We will love the thing that he loves and hear the thing that he hates. It's just like, all right, we might still in, in a spouse relationship, we might reach a stage to love our spouse that much, but so let put it in a state of our children. If we know that something is putting our children, but we are doing something to our children that will cause a, a, a damage to them or cause an effect upon them. We will want to stop. We will do everything to stop because we, especially with our, with our mother, if they say a mother loves her children is even more tight than our, our father's love to his children because she's the one who, who bear them for nine months, you understand? And she will guard them, our God-fearing mother. Because we've seen today, we've seen different people. We see how mothers are just abandoning, abandoning the children. But a God fearing mother, and that a lot really makes it different. A God fearing mother and a God fearing father, they will do everything in their power to guard these children because of the love and recognize that the responsibility that God has placed upon them. And it's so it should be in a marriage that here we know. I love my wife so much that I don't want to see her hurt. So therefore, if I know that this will hurt her, I will try by God's grace, because he said I can do all things through Christ who strengthen me by God's grace. I will not do anything to bring hurt upon her. And only thing that causes that is cause of love. And the same thing goes on with us. When we fall in love with God, brethren, that's why he said, if you love me, if you love me, keep my commandment. And we know what is sin. Sin is the transgression of the law of God. I also say, him that know it to do good and do it not to him is sin. So it's so important. Love must be the, the, the governing factor. And I likewise encourage us to love, love, love it, give up as a love itself. 
Amen. Anyone? It's, it says the apostles as per, personated by these lying spirits are made to contradict the, that what they have wrote, excuse me, at the dictation of the Holy Spirit when on earth. They deny the divine origin of the Bible through the two great errors. Now I underline these things for a purpose. Through the two great errors, the, Im the immortality of the soul and Sunday sacredness, Satan will bring the people under his deceptions. While the former, meaning immortality of the soul, because we know it all spiritism started off way in Eden when Satan told, told Eve, thou shalt not surely die. <clears throat> and after we see it spent more with the fox's sisters and it just take off. Mm. So that is the former. While the former lies the foundation of spiritualism, the latter, meaning Sunday sacredness, the false Sabbath, mark of the beast, creates a bond of sympathy with Rome. So you see where this is heading? This, all this is heading to Rome. Mm. And my next slide shows, and I'm quoting from Christianity.com, with the whole idea of purgatory. Now, this is defined on their website as purgatory is believed by some as a place for sinners who have God's grace but need to endure temporal punishment. Now, said my husband, it's going to make any sense. Hmm. The person have God's grace, but they need to endure temporal punishment for transgressions that did not receive payment during their lives. This, this, this just don't make any sense. In other words, if anyone has any leftover sin, this place purges them from it before they reaches the gate of heaven. So you see how much chances based on this belief, which is Catholicism, based on this belief, how much chances you have. So if you don't confess everything now, you just go in this little place and just get to up for a little while. And then after you will be well purged because fire refines and then you'll be at the gates of heaven. No, brethren. If this is true, then when you are at the gate of heaven, you will be seeing Satan there. You'll be seeing Hitler there. You'll be seeing Nero there. Even Saul, King Saul, you'll be seeing there. This could never be true. So you could just sin. And that is why the issue of the indulgences were introduced. You just sin. You just sin. Have a good time here on earth. And we'll just save up money enough. So when you die, this will be a savings to go into heaven. These are deceptions. We need to reform now. As soon as God brings your sins up to your mind, we need to repent and abandon it. And repenting does not mean just turning away for a while and not picking it up again. But a total detour, a total detour from one direction to the other, following Christ sincerely. That is correct. That is correct. There are many movies out there that promote these things, that really promote spiritualism. One of the ones I used to love to watch is a movie called Ghosts with Whoopi Goldberg and this other people, I, I can't remember their name. When her husband died and, and he was still roaming because some men killed him and then his spirit had to come back to show his wife how how he really died, and then Whoopi Gobo was serving as the medium in the show, and then his spirit went in her spirit, and she transformed. He just all the what's the word? What they're trying to do our children? Pain and and, and yes, desensitize us. 
that these things will be accepted in the last days. In the last days. These things really doesn't make any sense. And here we come to, we almost finished the slide. Here we come to the impersonation of Jesus. Persons will pretend to be Christ. I don't know how many of you saw this, um, this article. I think it was all over Facebook too. And as you can see on the comments underneath, someone really put on a laugh face because this is really funny for someone to really believe. A scary funny to believe that this man is really Jesus. And as my husband was rightly saying, that is why Satan tries so much imagery. So we, in our back of our head, is trying now to put our face to Jesus. So when the resemblance should come, we'll be like, here goes Jesus, he come. He come. No, this is a deception. And we know that this happened in Africa. Two African pastors allegedly find Jesus, so they find him and invite him to church. All these things is contradicting scriptures, brethren. Remember when Christ will come the second time, all eyes will see him. He will not touch earth again. So when we see these kind of supposedly funny thing, we are not to, to give in to these things. Not to give in to it at all. At all. And then our other way to it could look at this, we can have people impersonated Christ, but what about people who is really false Christians? False prophets. False prophets, false Christ, false Christ, antichrist, against Christ. And I remember being young, I, I used to really follow Benny Him. He was maybe like a role model. And when he came here in Trinidad, I went, I went. And, and he had a thing, he used to take off his jacket and, and every man that fall. Everything, brethren, everything we see someone do, we must find scriptural proof in the Bible. We must find it. And if it's not there, then who really come up with that? Who really come up with that? So they are, one hand where people will look the picture of Christ and pretend to be Christ. And there's the other hand where false Christ, antichrist, people who claim to be Christians and really deceiving people the same. Deceiving people the same. Our last quotation before, before we have um, our prayer request come in and any suggestions or comments is okay. It says, but the people of God, while all these things are happening, the people of God will not be misled. Amen. Praise the Lord. They will not be misled. The teachings of this false Christ are not in accordance with scripture. His blessings is pronounced upon the worshipers of the beast and his image. The very class upon whom the Bible declares that, the God, that God's unmingled wrath shall be poured out. So you see, that false Christ will actually be pointing people to Rome. And I, I just think about it more as this evangelical Protestants really pointing people, false Christians, pointing people to Rome, pointing people to that beast. I look at it as a, in that way. In the last days, they will have many deceptions. And this is part one for the last, Satan's last day deception. On Thursday, please God, we will be looking at the second part of it. But brethren, I encourage you. I encourage you. Let us keep watch. Let us not sleep. This is no time to be sleeping, and I, I mean spiritually. Let us keep watch and make sure that we are not being deceived. 
Because if we are deceived, we have no one to blame but ourselves. Let us not be deceived, brethren. The floor is open to anyone. Morning, Sister Krishna. Brother B, how are you doing? I did, I did. Morning, morning, morning. morning brother. Yeah. Well, the message is really for us as Christians, you know, as professed Seven Day Adventists, because we see that Satan already has the whole oh, 90.9% .9 of the um, Protestant world as Sunday keeping and and immortality of the soul and all of that. So certain parts in the reading talk about the people of God. When they talk about the people of God, they talk about those who profess to keep God's Sabbath and those who profess to be true Christian. Yeah. So true. Yeah, so um, in, our, in our church, there are a lot of things that, especially when it comes to the three angels message, which, include, which includes the San Jovi message. You don't hear messages like that in the church anymore because every doctrine you can find in the sanctuary. You know, so, so in our churches today, you would never find, you'll never hear sermons coming directly from the sanctuary teaching. The sanctuary teaches is not a seven day Adventist doctrine, even though here yeah, we hold a strong principle there. It's a Bible based doctrine. See? <laughs> and then, um, and then you see most of our ministers and elders don't preach it and they don't read from the spirit of prophecy. You see, they don't quote from the spirit of prophecy. They may quote a little here and there, nothing of significance. So the message is really for us. We as a people, we will be deceived. Even the very pastors and elders and members will be deceived if they don't really study for themselves because you're not going to hear it from pastors. You're not going to hear it from most elders. Right? and most pastors. So mm -hmm. we as the people, we have to study the word of God and to know what is true and right because we have even um, professors who've been teaching our young men to be to become ministers, teaching them that the sanctuary, there is no mm -hmm. sanctuary. You know, we have many mm -hmm. professors that I can name that were teaching our young men to become ministers. And they are coming out now and saying, there is no sanctuary, there is no Sabbath, Jesus is my Sabbath and all this kind of foolishness. So we have to study good for ourselves, you know, so that we may not be deceived in these last days. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thanks for your comment. Amen. I really, I really, and that is the key, eh, my brother. That is the key for every one of us to sit down here. Study God's word. I tell this is my new norm. My new norm. I just want to study God's word, study for yourself, because I was deceived. I I I, I find it, even Lord, the Holy Spirit didn't cross my heart. Study, study, study. Don't just, don't just remain there and just listen to what people say. You go and know, come and know Christ for yourself. So this is my greatest encouragement when I meet anybody. Study God's word, know God for yourself. No God for yourself. So for all of us here, this is the key. Let me just don't come here and just sit down and we discuss God with and just leave. When we go back home, study. Study, study, Virgin. We need to study God with more than ever. But the Bible says plain, if it's possible, the very liquid you see. He said, if the righteous say, yes, if we say, what a body? Ungodly. Where would he sin out and the ungodly appear? So if the righteous, according to brother, if the righteous, that doesn't mean if very will enough. Because the Bible says plainly, what is righteousness? Yeah. Keeping the commandments is living righteousness. So, meaning like us, if the righteous, those who keep the commandment of God, yes, he be saved. So, brethren and sisters, please let us study God's word. Let us study God's word more than ever. Amen. Emmanuel, you can go ahead. I saw your hand up. Yeah, good morning to you all. Morning. Yeah. Just want to add a little two to the. um. And that of spiritualism that is creeping up into the church and is a avenue that we don't often look at in the sense of when you look at the start of spiritualism, it would have been with Satan when he told Eve that she shall not surely die. 
But I look at it in the next sense where the doctrine that is being preached now is that you will not overcome your sins. You'll continue sinning when Christ comes. Mm. And that is one of the biggest mistakes that we You're breaking up with us. No, we lost them. It's his internet. Okay, sorry about that. Um, brother Emmanuel, once they come back, we will get the opportunity once we still have yes. the brother was saying about people are teaching that we cannot overcome sin that goes right back to the sanctuary so which That's means true. if we cannot overcome sin there is no sanctuary principles for us to follow because mm -hmm. in the sanctuary that sins are being cleansed that's right but if we can't overcome what then why christ come and die why why come and die if we can't overcome sin the thing was saying come and die they're gonna take everybody and the us back up hello <laughs> But Emmanuel, yes, sorry about that. You could still buy a pump, please. Yeah, I'm not my internet disconnect, the lady devil. <laughs> yeah, <you're so laughs> yes. yeah, what I was saying is one of the biggest mistakes, and I was going deep into it and I realized something, right? The Bible gives us a definition of sin. It says sin is the transgression of God's law. Now we must sit down and study something. God says, if you love me, keep my commandments. You see that his commandment is not grievous. So just think about it. Every time we sin, what we are doing, we are breaking the commandments of God. Now here we're going on. Satan claim, as we learn in the pen of inspiration, he claims that we cannot keep the commandment of God. So every time we say that we cannot overcome our sins, we are practically telling God that his commandments are burdensome. We cannot keep such a commandment. And we are claiming that which Satan of ourselves claim. Now we want us to look at just two scriptures. I have many more, right? In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8, it says, speaking of Christ, I read from 7, it says, so that he come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, right? In verse 8, it says, who shall also confirm you unto the end that he may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ? It tells us that when Christ is up here, we must be what? We must be blameless. Yes. Then if we go to... Just a minute, right? We'll go yeah. to First Timothy chapter 6, verses 14. It says that thou keep this commandment without spot, unbreakable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. And there's many more texts like that telling us how we must be when Christ comes. So it's nothing mm -hmm. that we could guess about and say that, well, well, I can never overcome my sins. I have to be doing what I'm doing over and over. That is a trick from Satan. Yeah. If it is right. acknowledge that, it's like we're telling Christ, Christ, your commandments are burdensome. I cannot keep your commandments. And I liken it, and Christ has made it easy for us, you know. I mean, the problem with us is that we love sin. But Christ yeah. has laid the foundation, and, and he made it so easy for us, brother. Hear what he does. He said to him that no have to do good and do it is not to him, it is sin. He says at the time of ignorance, God winks. Now, when it comes to the point of perfection, God wants us daily to die to sin. What you don't know, what you didn't get the opportunity to know as yet, God doesn't hold you accountable for it. God holds us accountable for the light that he has already given to us, and he wants us to live to that light that he has given to us. If we have 1% of light, we have to live perfect to that 1% of light. Amen. And that's the basic of understanding this thing. And I think we just make it a whole mess because... We often look at ourselves and figure, but I can't stop doing that. But the reality is we cannot look at ourselves because mm -hmm. I cannot stop it on my own. You want to give me the strength of Christ Jesus. And the reason we're here today is because Christ would have given us the strength. So as we go forward, I just want to share one last quotation from um, Christ Object Lessons, page 158, I think it is. Ellen White states, she says that it is only he who knows himself to be a sinner that Christ can see. It's only when we acknowledge our sin, acknowledge where we are sinning, that Christ could save us, he could step in, and we could overcome that sin. And First Corinthians, I think, 10 to 10 says, they have no temptation taking you. No temptation come to us that we cannot overcome. So the onus lies upon us 
to make a change. God will give us grace abundant for us and we will overcome. But it's a daily step by God's grace. But we have to acknowledge where we are going wrong and we have to acknowledge that Christ is more than able to give us the power. You understand? One more text again in Matthew chapter 1. It says that when Christ came, what to do? He came to die to take us away from our sins in a sense. Christ came so that we could overcome our sins. It doesn't make no sense Christ coming, dying for us, and then this sin, we have to continue, and we have to go into heaven with that sin. It makes no mm -hmm. sense. Christ's power is more than able to give us the victory over sin. Because, Brother Marcel, yeah. we would have been doing things in our life before that was unlike, unlike Christ. Right? Mm -hmm. Christ has given us the power to overcome such. And as we continue, you know what he does for us? He opens our eyes to show us more. So our, our duty now is to say, yes, Lord, I'm going wrong here. Give me the strength to overcome such. As we go forward, he'll continue to give us the strength. But we must acknowledge it. If we don't acknowledge it, we cannot overcome those sins. All right? Good truth, my brother. Amen. Good truth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your comment. Amen. So true. Okay, so at this time, we'd like to ask if anyone have any prayer requests or like us to pray with you. It doesn't matter. We believe we serve a God who still hears and answer prayer. And you know, we all have different issues dealing with. So, is there anyone who would like a um, prayer request? Have any prayer requests? All right. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, you can go ahead. I'll just like for us to pray for our dear sister who we're, we're doing Bible studies with, right? We're supposed to start in a little bit, right? So the prayer, I okay. pray that Satan will not hold her back, that she will come and that by his grace we'll be able to reach her in Jesus' name. I know Satan has come and he's going to hinder the work. I pray that she'll see the importance of such. Yes. And that we'll be able to do our work for the Lord in the most humble way. Amen. 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 You, you know, the, this morning I get up with that same word, my brother. That same word. When I, when, I, when, I, when I think about my loved ones and them, those who have not accepted yet, and I, I, I get up with that, the Lord plays up with me for my heart. I say, Lord, I, I don't think they understand. I don't think they understand what's going on in them. I don't think so because here it is that they, some of us, that some of them who I know, you know, they, they believe that they can do good and um, that will be suffice, be enough, do good. But that way, the Bible says, plainly, all our righteousness that filthy right unless we don't accept Christ as our personal savior. And, and not just that. Yes, we could plan with us, they might say what I see. People say that they baptize and accept Christ, but their life not different. But it's important for us, as, as my wife was saying, when we accept Christ, God calls us to live a life different. So, you know, accepting Christ, and they might burden upon, I say, Lord, especially my mother, I say, Lord, Father, I don't know. I need, I need to go and talk with her again to let her know the seriousness of accepting Christ. So I want you know that to be my request. Keep that in prayer, my virgin. Pray for, pray for my mother. Pray for my mother that she will make that decision. Right, and we also have a prayer request from our Facebook Live. Um, one soliciting prayer for Katie. We know what is going on there at this point. Real mayhem. So we want to pray for them as well. So, okay. Um, I can pray one. The spring, I would you like to pray? Once and um, I know we have this dear sister, Sister Devon. Are you able to unmute and pray? This is the sister who was there when we were having the outreach by Sister Billy, okay, who came across. Right. Nice having you. Are you able to unmute and pray with us? Yes, all right. Yes, so, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Nice good morning. having you, my sister. Um, yeah. we're asking you to pray for what is happening in Haiti now. Um, you know, okay. are, you, are, are you aware of what's happening in Haiti? Yes, yes, the incident with the president and well, the wife is still alive fighting for her life, yeah. Right, right. right. So, so you can pray for that. Um, 
Father Springer, you yeah. will pray for um, um, Marcel's family. Okay. Marcel's family. And then, um, Marcel, you can pray for Brother Kirk Bible study. Okay. All right. So let us, let us, let us pray. Okay. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness, your protection over your children, dear God. But we come before you at this time, not for us, dear God, alone, but we pray for the situation in Haiti. We know what they are battling with, dear God. Even before this situation, they had a earthquake problem years ago, what is happening, dear God. But we place this situation, dear God, in your hands, dear God, that you would work it according to your plan. Be with the wife of the president, their father. We ask that you may heal her, dear God. We know everything is in your hands. We know all things are possible by you, dear God. So we ask that, dear God, that you may cover her, dear God, their children also, dear Father. Even the people in here too may be struggling. We know they are Christians, they are non-Christians, but you would look after according to your way. But we pray that they may choose, dear God, at this time, dear Father, as sad as it, is, as sad as it may be, to call upon you trusting you dear god to find and have that relationship with you dear god we pray that you may send the people and the message to them dear god that they may walk after you dear god we see the situation and it's heart wrenching for human beings dear god but we know it's even more heart wrenching for you to see what your children are going through but mm -hmm. if they would just simply call upon you you can do it dear father after they may trust and know with you that all things are possible. Guide them, dear God. You build a doctor that's looking after his wife, the deceased wife at this time, dear God. And everyone close to them. You will bring justice to them, dear God. But we ask that you may be the one that will take charge and they will see your hands working and come to know you who is life eternal. This and other mercies I ask, dear God, in your son's most precious name. Amen. 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 Our eternal Father in heaven, we did want to thank you for this opportunity uh, to use in this platform for good, to come together and to bow and petition your throne, dear Father, not for anything that uh, you have not already given us, but mm -hmm. we know, Lord, that you have given us all things that are necessary for our soul salvation, even our spiritual well-being, our physical well-being. Father, we come before you, we present... Uh, but a bee's mother to you, dear Father. We ask, O oh God, that you will beat back the powers of darkness. You have said in your word that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that you will raise a standard against the enemy, dear Father. And we ask, O oh God, that now that you will raise a standard against the enemy, beat back the powers of darkness, O oh Lord, that she may make a decision to follow you all the way, dear Father. May the life of uh, the bee and his wife and his children be a light to her. Be a light to the people around their Lord. So no, not only her, their Lord, but all the the, the, the uh, programs that they had, their father, all the all the all outdoor outreach programs that they had. Those who have heard the word of Lord, that the word will plant a seed within their mind, and they will come to know you, who is eternal. Will come to know you before it's eternally too late. So Father, we pray a special blessing on his mother, that you would heal her from whatever sickness that she has, O oh Lord. We pray, Father, for the sickness of sin, that you would forgive her, and that we help her to see, O oh Lord, that is a risen Savior, a Savior who came from glory, a Savior who died upon the cross, a Savior who was resurrected, dear Lord, and is now working out of salvation of fear and trembling in the most holy place, O oh Lord, and he's blotting out her sins, dear Father. And we pray, O oh God, that her name would not be blotted out, and she gave herself to you. May she made that decision be sealed for eternity, dear Father, we pray. And we thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we continue to linger long in the present Lord, I too also petition you, Lord Jesus, for we know that you are still God and stay are still answer, a prayer answering God, Lord Jesus. Amen. I I ask you to be with the sister who is about to do Bible studies with the Emmanuel family, Lord Father. Amen. I pray that she will recognize her need, Lord Father, for you whenever. Help her to recognize that her, her righteousness is at filthy rat and that she needs to accept you as a personal Lord and Savior. Help her to recognize that we all have sinned yes, and indeed we need of a Savior, Lord Father. 
I pray that you'll continue to bless Emmanuel's family, Lord Father. I pray that they'll continue to allow the Holy Spirit to continue to lead them. And as they open their mouth, that he will fill them, Lord Father, and that the word will be will be meet and produce season, Lord Father. I pray that you continue to work with them, Lord Father, as they continue to use every opportunity to, to share your love with those that they get in contact with. I pray for all those who are here this, this morning, Lord Father, in the program. I pray that we all will see the need for you, Lord Father, and fail not to use every opportunity, mm. Lord Father, that you have given to us, Lord Father. Help us not to sleep at this point of time. Help us not to be like the five foolish virgin, Lord Father, not seeking every opportunity to share your love to others, Lord Father. Day by day, Lord Father, as you allow those people to come our way, help us, Lord, that we will tell them about your love. But most of all, help that our lifestyle will be one that representing you, Jesus. Help us, Lord, that we will eat, uh, that we'll continue to spend time in your word, that your word will sanctify us, Lord Father. You say that even in John 17, 19, he said, for their sake, I sanctify myself. Lord Father, help us that we, for, our, for their sake, those that we, you are allowed to get in contact with, that we will sanctify ourselves through thy word. For he said, thy word is truth. Continue to be with us during the course of the day. Lord, I pray that when you come, Father, which we know is very soon, help us, none of us will be found wanted. Help us that we see all these things are taking place, Lord Father, all around the world. Help us not to lose sight, Lord Father, and get accustomed mm-hmm. to it, Lord Father, and just say that it's just a normal thing and this will pass. But help us to really see that your coming is sooner than we can even think. Your eminent coming. That's right. Help us to see, it, Lord Father. All signs are telling that your coming is soon. Sooner than we can possibly think. And you say that for the, for, for the righteous sake, Lord Father, you'll cut it short for righteousness sake, Lord Father. So if you don't cut it, Lord Father, not even one of us will be saved. Mm. I pray, Lord, that you help us to take life for granted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Amen. Yeah. amen. So, Bajan, again, God bless you all. So, so Charlie, nice having you. Nice having you here. Thank you all for being in our Tuesday morning's devotion. And we're looking forward to seeing you as we do part two on Thursday morning, right and early. May God bless you all. Have a blessed day, everyone.